Our Center for Global Communication Studies here at Annenberg recently held a conference on 30 years after the Iranian Revolution. And we gathered together a group of scholars, largely Iranian scholars, who work in the United States and in Europe, and who think about many issues about changes in the new media. Media representations form our, our perceptions of ourselves and others, especially others. And those um, perceptions, which are often misperceptions or stereotypical, uh, become realities. And I think that is one of the challenges uh, that we are facing. Uh, and the, the question is, how do we overcome these uh, stereotypical images? In view of the fact uh, that we are uh, you know, saturated in a media environment. In the case of Iran, I'm, I'm interested in the way in which young Iranians especially uh, are, identify themselves in the public interaction and use media, and that would be anything. It could be all the way from TV to uh, internet and satellite TV and, and, and of course radio and, and also cell phones, mobiles, to, to actually interact with one another and, and challenge an official culture that tells them to act or behave or think in a certain way. My interest in you know, um, popular culture right now in Iran, media culture, youth culture, um, uh, that, that interest has to do with my own you know, experience of uh, growing up in Iran at a time when we had a different uh, government and that was pre-revolutionary, that was uh, the Shah's government. Uh, so I grew up on American popular culture. I was involved in distributing flyers of the speeches and sermons by Ayatollah Khomeini. Um, at a time, as a teenager, um, I, I was excited about, you know, distributing uh, things that at the time, uh, you know, uh, was for sure dangerous to be, you know, doing, uh, distributing. And uh, I knew that, but as a teenager, I guess, you know, adventure, you know, is always uh, an appealing thing. There was a time that uh, people, uh, regardless of their uh, political affiliation, were thinking that uh, change is something uh, uh, very um, forthcoming in Iran. But Iranian society has uh, developed uh, in a way that is not going uh, to undertake uh, unpredictable uh, changes. Everyone is trying actually to in, in, in exert or insert their influence over the society, but the society itself is not uh, uh, very uh, simplistic and easy to approach. In the case of Shia Iranian culture, you're not, as a woman, you're not supposed to come out of in the public. And if you do, of course, you need to veil yourself. You have to wear the chador. Now, having said this, there's also a kind of a, a empowerment that goes with that. The chador, through the chador, a woman is able to look through that kind of hole that is made in, in her dress or whatever, the chador, and through that she could control who she could see but not anyone being able to see her. Online, the religious woman, the conservative woman wearing the chador could also do that and she could do that online by taking, her, taking off her chador and not only pretending to be this public woman who's coming out in a public space, public sphere, public virtual space and talking about herself, but she's also able to reveal some of her most intimate stuff about her relationship with her husband, something she wouldn't be able to do. The new technologies together, especially the internet and the satellite technologies and the uh, cell phone, um, and the capabilities that they, they provide for um, discourse, communication, exchange of information, uh, will eventually uh, result in uh, 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 democracy. Uh, in various countries and I think to some extent we have seen that uh, democracy is on the rise uh, in Iran and elsewhere. It's just a different world, <laughs> just a very different world. It's, a, it's like I feel when I come into the conference this morning that I was carrying all this memory and I wanted to not only share it on this level but on an academic level and suddenly outside of the conference there is this world that is completely unaware of it. How do you break that bridge that gap? I'm hoping that uh, the kinds of 
research that we do, um, the kinds of writings that we do, uh, shed light on the complexity of Iranian society and uh, that policymaker, uh, policymakers um, uh, do take advantage of these, you know, sort of research projects that we do um, and hopefully uh, the kinds of understanding that our research enables. We often think of Iran as a place that is uh, tight, suppressed, repressed, and controlled by government. But what I think came through in the words of these scholars was a, a place that has a certain kind of vibrancy, that is searching for new images, that is using new media, that is reaching out in many ways to the world and, f and the world is reaching out to it. And I think the telling element of this was a notion that mediation and that media can make a big difference in shifting the, the way we think about Iran and the way Iran thinks about the world.